Across the globe, there are more than 10,000 different cities that are all unique in their own way. While cities in the United States are dominated by cars, European cities are the polar opposite. This is because cities such as Paris are much older than American cities like New York, and the age difference has led to many interesting changes in the physical layout of each city. European cities are also known to have a lot of bike paths accessible throughout the city, something you rarely see in American ones. But besides the drastic comparisons between cities across the globe, why are American cities so different, and why didn't they follow the European blueprint for building a city? When taking a look at a city such as New York from satellite imagery, you see a lot of horizontal and vertical lines crossing between buildings and intersections. This is known as the grid plan, or the grid method. Now, the grid method was the founding framework for American cities, and besides New York, almost every city in America has adopted this design choice. By using the grid method, American cities were perfectly designed for both residential and commercial uses, since streets bordered buildings on each side. This can be visualized in a city like Los Angeles, where you can see the grid method being used for over five straight miles of streets. While this method of city planning was great for commercial and residential uses, European cities had a different approach to city planning. When you take a look at a city such as London from satellite imagery, you don't see many grids at all, and you might not even see any. In Europe, they did not use the grid method to build cities. They instead built radial-based cities. Now, it may seem that radial-based cities are the exact opposite from grid-based cities, but that's not exactly true. A radial-based city is based on a series of concentric circles that surround a traffic intersection. This can be seen all across Europe, in cities such as Paris and Denmark. The design dates back to ancient times, but is still very useful in today's cities. But again, this is something you rarely see in the United States, and there are many reasons behind this. For one, U.S. cities were designed for profitability, and the grid method allows as many homes and buildings to be placed in a certain location without wasting any space. It also means that the city will be designed for cars, and not for walking or biking. While this method has worked for hundreds of years, it shows how European cities are better designed for residential use over commercial uses. But this statement is not 100% true. While the cities are better designed for walking and bicycles, they still serve as a commercial use. Take this image of the Champs-Élysées, where there are large streets down the center and barely any intersections, something in contrast with New York City. Just by looking at these images, you can tell that the city was designed for walking, not cars. While there are roadways, walking was the priority when planning the city. Another key factor in play is land use laws in U.S. and European cities. For example, agricultural subsidies in Europe have persuaded farmers to not sell their land to developers, and instead continue farming on it to prevent large development projects from taking shape. This can be seen in Paris, as there are still small farms that surround the city, but compared to New York, there are no farms in sight. Land use laws have played a big role in how cities have been built and developed all across the globe, and they are partially responsible for why cities are all designed in their own unique way. While cities are known for having large populations, new studies have revealed that cities across the globe are facing a population decline. Today, more than 55% of the world's population lives in urban areas, and that number is expected to increase to 68% by 2050. Predictions show that people are leaving cities in hopes of living in more suburban areas. Now, this is being seen in American cities, and it's not necessarily because people are moving out, but just not moving in. European cities will be put to the test to see if they are closer to an urban environment due to their pedestrian-focused design. Since more of the world's population is looking to live in places with more open space and less congested areas, they may turn to European cities, where they were designed for residential uses over commercial uses. Throughout the next 20 to 30 years, we will see how cities across the globe react to more people wanting to live in the urban lifestyle. The grid plan will also be put to the test to see if it's a reliable method of city planning for decades into the future. The model of the European city has been around for hundreds of years, and many countries have used it as a blueprint for designing and planning their own cities. Although America was different and decided to create their own blueprint for a city, they showed the world how a city could be built catering towards both commercial and residential uses. But for now, American and European cities will always stay unique, and showed how two methods of city planning ended up changing the world. 
Thank you for watching and please subscribe if you enjoyed the video.